to take. Gotta make a fool of somebody. still no sign of Tarquin's deposit account, nor was there any reply from Freddie Garrity. Accordingly, our crew decided to confront Mr. Garrity directly at his home on the Sussex coast. After we explained Tarquin's predicament in some detail, he agreed to speak to us. Yes, I did help Tarquin out of a difficult situation. I was under the impression I was helping him. But you bought the copyright of his book, which then went on to take one and a half million pounds. I took a gamble, and the gamble paid off. I'm sorry to hear him now on his uppers. Um, I'll do what I can to help. But what of the profits from his book? Hasn't he got some entitlement? Well, strictly speaking, legally speaking, no. I mean, I bought him out fair and square. Um, I can speak to my advisers, and I'm sure they will try to help the situation. I mean, <laughs> I'm not a callous man. You have to excuse me, phone. So when they say on November the 14th, Freddie Garrity, you are 50, I'll be 55. Why did you lie? I don't know, really. It's just, I wanted to feel young. I looked young. I wanted to be one of the boys, I suppose, you know. Following the success of I'm Telling You Now, the band went to America, where the Yanks fell in love with him and his silly dance. Chubby Checker even recorded Let's Do the Freddy to cash in on the craze. The twist, it wasn't. Brian Epstein said there's a group in England called Freddy and the Dreamers and uh, they're a very funny group. I said, I'll show you a clip. This was in America, of course. We got invited across to America to do a show called the Trini Lopez Show. And Trini says to me, what's this dance called? Well, I didn't realise it was... I didn't even think of it as a dance. So I said, oh, it's the, um, it's the Freddy. So he says, ladies and gentlemen, Doing the Freddy, singing, I'm telling you now, it's Freddy and the Dreamers. And of course, it went to number one in America. And that was my first number one, and that was two years after it had hit records in England. Freddy never cashed in on his US popularity. His hits there were in 1965. That summer, with Jimmy Jewell, he was locked into a Blackpool summer season and couldn't tour. In their original form, the Dreamers became a 60s hangover. And the sun was made to burn. As it has for many others, the club circuit came to the rescue. Lucrative, regular work gave Freddie the good life. A mansion in Bournemouth, Matt Bygraves for a neighbour. Well, nothing's perfect. Then, four years ago, already losing his hair and the high notes, Freddie split with his wife and family. The worst part was going through a divorce when you don't want a divorce. And from living in a £450,000 house and moving into a caravan in Stratford. But that was my own choice, you know. I wanted space. But there wasn't that much space in the caravan. <laughs> and uh, that was a bit of a downer. And then, of course, uh, I met two years ago, and uh, she's a lovely lady. And we got married 12 weeks ago. We bought a new house. We've still got the caravan to go on there if we need space. <laughs> uh, I've come out of all that rubbish, you know. And... A few years ago, Freddie was even writing songs. A new sound for an old passion. I love, I travel the country on one night stand. Now that's a Freddie and the Dreamers song I haven't heard before. What's the story behind that? Well, it's about what I'm all about. It's a song I wrote about um, six years ago. It's called I Am A Singer in the 60s band. Um, with a view to having it released as a single. Uh, we did the, uh, as you hear, we, we, we recorded it and it was sent out to various um, record companies of one which was very interested and they said it reminded me of a group called KISS who could do this particular one, I said. So um, he said, um, I'd I'm very interested, I'd like to see the group. So we said, well the name of the group is Fads, so Freddie and the Dreamers, but we thought we'd give it a modern name, we didn't want them to know it really was. So he says, well I'm very interested in the record. 
And he said, can I watch this group working? So, of course, we had to let them know it really was Freddy and the Dreamers. And as soon as he was told it was Freddy and the Dreamers, that was the end of the story. Well, not quite. At 54 mark, not 50, Freddy and his toy boy aged Dreamers can still reckon up to 1,500 quid for a night on the circuit. And it's a long time ago, but a chart on his Congleton hallway is a fair memory to boast. Three Manchester bands, one, two and three in the charts. Herman's Hermits, Wayne Fontana and Freddie. Not a happy Monday in sight. <laughs>